fourth moral discipline of yoga is the practice of continence or brahmacharya, which is the true reason for semen retention. When sensual urges are controlled, the part of human energy which is expressed in sexual union becomes transmuted into a special spiritual energy called Oja Shakti and is stored up in the brain. All great spiritual giants of the world have practiced celibacy and that is the reason why they were able to electrify the whole world through the purification of the sexual energy we generate on semen retention, giving birth to the bioelectrical energy called Ojas. A retainer with an abundance of this energy keeps his audience spellbound. There is a peculiar charm in his smile and a power in the words emanating from his heart. He produces a very profound impression in the minds of all. What is wanted is restraint and not suppression of sexual desire. In restraint no sexual thought will arise in the mind. There is perfect sublimation of sexual energy. But in suppression the aspirant is not safe. When favorable opportunities occur, the repressed desire manifests with redoubled force and there is danger of a miserable downfall. What is wanted is deep inner life. Open yourself to higher spiritual consciousness. Feel the divine presence and divine guidance in your life. Become like a child. Speak to God freely. Do not hide your thoughts. Pray for light, purity, strength, peace and knowledge. Then only then will you be established in Brahmacharya. From the book Yama and Niyama The Path of Ethical Discipline Why does almost all religions place strict rules around sex, especially for the monks and nuns of these religions, who are almost always prohibited from any and all sex or masturbation? And why is there so much iconography dealing with serpents, snakes and dragons, and involving temptation in religious motifs and iconography? For one simple reason, the same energy that is used to procreate is the very same energy used for spiritual transformation and evolution. To evolve, to become a true man and then to become more than just a man, one must harness this sexual energy, tame it, or rather, make oneself a proper vessel to utilize it and use that psychosexual spiritual energy for self-metamorphosis, for self-actualization. This psychosexual spiritual energy is none other than the Kundalini energy, pictured as a sleeping coiled serpent residing in the base of the spine. When the Kundalini energy is awakened and brought up through the chakras, different levels of awakening occur, along with certain faculties or powers awakening in the practitioner. If Kundalini is raised to the seventh and highest chakra, a profound and sublime transformation of consciousness occurs. This is the final goal of yoga. The retainer's three treasures, Jing, Qi and Shen, is not equivalent to the Kundalini, but they are closely related. This concept explains why celibacy is important in religions and why semen retention has such massive benefits. In India, Brahmacharya has a few meanings and is commonly equated to celibacy. Its literal definition is to have God-like conduct. However, to think of Brahmacharya as mere celibacy is to fall quite short of its true definition. The main goal of Brahmacharya is to conserve Vairya or Bindu, two words that both mean semen. Vairya or Bindu or semen is the main physical equivalent of Jing or Ojas. When we conserve and retain semen, then we build up our Jing or Ojas. However, we can fritter and waste our Jing or Virya not just through ejaculation, but by lusting after other things, namely seeking constant stimulation through the other senses as well. Master Swami Sivananda said, Brahmacharya is purity in thought, word and deed. It is celibacy and continence. Brahmacharya is the vow of celibacy. But Brahmacharya is not mere bachelorhood. It includes the control not only of the sex or reproductive organs, but also of all other sense organs in thought, word and deed. This is the definition of Brahmacharya in a broad sense of the term. The door to Nirvana or perfection is complete Brahmacharya. Brahmacharya is a concept within Indian religions that literally means to stay in conduct 
within one's own soul. In yoga, Hinduism, and Jainism, it generally refers to a lifestyle characterized by semen retention or complete abstinence. Brahmacharya is somewhat different from the English term celibacy, which merely means non-indulgence in sexual activity. Brahmacharya is when a person completely controls his body and mind through ascetic means. This is a critical distinction. It is not simply abstaining from sex and masturbation, but complete control of body and mind through ascetic means. It is the eradication of wanton craving, of desiring something so badly to the point of feeling incomplete or less than without it. This may sound like only big things would qualify, but little things absolutely fit in here. It's one thing to want something out of a place of wholeness versus out of a sense of lack. This means the person who is a celibate or one who practices basic semen retention but still lusts after every attractive girl he sees is not practicing true brahmacharya. The person who lusts after a certain status and feels they aren't good enough until they reach it, isn't a true retainer. If you find yourself fiending or lusting after anything, you know your practice of semen retention has slipped. To practice brahmacharya, or true semen retention is, in its truest sense, is to overcome all sensual desires. To be unhappy and irritated unless you get to spend hours gaming. To constantly have to check social media to feel incomplete without getting high on your drugs of choice or to crave and lust after any source of short, empty pleasure and stimulation is to fall short of true brahmacharya. The one who is content with little material possession, or the one who does what must be done with ease and prospers with simplicity, this one is a true retainer. The eradication of all forms of lust, of feeling incomplete until some certain thing is achieved or acquired, is a very difficult goal indeed. Just be mindful of those times that lust for anything arises and check yourself. You're already complete and whole. No outside thing, be it a woman or anything else, will make you any more complete. That's the whole secret of being a true semen retention practitioner, but it's a long road to get there. One must truly lack and want for nothing. Living life from a place of centered calm wholeness is what brahmacharya really means. This doesn't mean we become a vegetable who sits in a coma on the couch doing nothing. It does mean we learn to overcome impulses, cravings, and addictions. Simply ask yourself, is what I'm about to do going to further me along my path to self-evolution, or am I simply wasting my precious dopamine and mental energy to Instagram, Reddit, games, Netflix, junk food, drugs, or alcohol? I'm not suggesting you should become a complete bore, a person who can't let go a little bit and do something that isn't productive once in a while. Eat that slice of cheesecake sometimes. Enjoy a good gaming session with your friends once in a while. Have a couple drinks with your partner now and then. But nothing is more useless than scrolling on Reddit, TikTok or other social media. So try to keep that habit to a minimum if you want to be successful while on the path of semen retention. These things release dopamine big time, which is why they are so pleasurable, but give you nothing in return. We want to conserve dopamine and have our brains release it, to motivate us to move toward our tasks. We don't want to waste it every 10 minutes when we unconsciously pick up our phones to scroll through unnecessary junk on social media. We don't want to burn through our dopamine by gaming hours a day, so much so that the real world seems uninteresting. We don't want to be so addicted to foods that are engineered to hack into the pleasure circuits of our brains that fresh fruit seems boring. Or a nice home-cooked meal doesn't do it for us because we're used to MSG-coated, deep-fried restaurant food. See the difference? We need to cut back, big time, on these empty sources of stimulation so that the real world starts to become more interesting and engaging again. By conserving semen, by not lusting after the female form and sex, and by controlling the heart, mind, and the sense organs, one develops true brahmacharya and becomes a true practitioner of semen retention. And when the mind is settled, centered present, and not craving constant stimulation and distraction through the senses, 
Jing begins to build up real quick. That Jing can also become the potent jet fuel for spiritual progress in life, allowing Kundalini energy to begin to unfold and blossom, transforming your entire life into something much more divine. The goal need not be enlightenment. If you want to become an unstoppable dynamo of a man, you still need to build up Jing and use that energy to begin to arouse the sleeping psychosexual energy, the Kundalini. Further, the drive to have sex is largely controlled by the brainstem, our reptilian brain. This part of the brain is quite sneaky, making decisions before the conscious mind gets a chance to say anything. Its drives are also immensely powerful, as many are tied to our survival. The reptilian brain, being a combination of sneaky and powerful, creates significant challenges for maintaining discipline and achieving progress in life especially while one practices semen retention. Taming the libidinal serpent or dragon is therefore very literal. We are conquering and reclaiming control over our reptilian brain. Think about Adam and Eve and the fall of man. A serpent in the Garden of Eden tempted Eve to eat a fruit from the tree of knowledge with Adam, causing them to realize their nakedness and making them feel shame over it. After that, God banished them from the Garden of Eden, condemning Adam to a life of hard labor in order to get his basic needs met, and Eve to painful childbirth. This story can be seen as an allegory for how succumbing to your reptilian mind, the mind that craves sex and sensual pleasures, banishes you from the Garden of Eden, which is a metaphor for the state of bliss and perfection one could achieve by maintaining brahmacharya and pursuing true semen retention. This is a small taste of the rich meal that is the connection between religion, God, enlightenment and self-evolution, and semen retention or celibacy, as well as the constant iconography of snakes, serpents and dragons. Whether you believe in anything spiritual or not, I do highly recommend you develop and discipline your mind while also purifying and strengthening the body so that they become a unified and fit vessel that is able to handle the evolutionary power of Kundalini, the psychosexual spiritual energy laying dormant in each and every one of us. The practice of just sitting. This is a good exercise to check yourself and how far you may have come on the path of semen retention and to cutting out the constant desire for stimulation. A couple times a week, just sit down on a quiet park bench or on your porch, or even just on your bed. Set a timer on your phone for 10 minutes and put it aside, and then just sit. Think about whatever you want, but don't use it as a brainstorming session. You don't have to meditate, in fact, don't meditate. Just be mindful and notice your thoughts come and go. Try not to fidget too much. Just be. Don't play on your phone. If you smoke cigarettes or weed, Now's not the time. Don't sit there and sip a beer, tea or coffee. Just be. How irritating is it? How strong is the urge to get up and do something, anything? How often do you glance at your phone? Did you unconsciously reach for it? This is a good test to indicate how addicted you are to being busy. Remember, semen retention is all about gathering in and containing energy. All that busyness and all that constant doing is a constant frittering away of your energy. It may sound paradoxical, but if you want to make fast progress on this path, get used to just being. It's a break for the whole body and mind system and allows you to settle, center and recharge. At first, do this practice at least once a week. When you notice that you're beginning to get less antsy, you can be sure you've made some progress. When you actually begin to enjoy it, you know you've made some real progress. You should inject many of these moments throughout the day. It can be anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds. Just take a second to pause, relax, be mindful, and just be. Then mindfully move on to whatever you were about to do. As Blaise Pascal said, all of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. I don't know
supposed to win it tonight, but 